so I wanted to do this video to explain what a PhD defense is and then briefly explain the process that I went through for completing mine. So I've recently completed my PhD and it is now September 2020. So obviously because of the coronavirus pandemic, it did affect how I was able to do my defense. But I'm briefly gonna explain uh, what happened there. A PhD varies in length depending on what country you're in. So in the UK and I think most of Europe, they are typically between three to four years. Over in America, um, I think the average is between five to six years, but they can take up to like eight to 10 years, which is oh, crazy. Here in Hong Kong where I've done my PhD, the average is four years and that's how long it took me. Four years and one month, so almost on time. I had those four years to complete my entire thesis. Now a thesis basically, at least in the sciences, like mine, they consist of different chapters and each chapter is essentially a different experiment or a different combinations of experiment that make up your whole thesis. After the four years, you hand in the first copy of your thesis. So you print out the four years worth of work all written up and you hand that in. And that goes to a panel of examiners and these will be different professors which are really highly ranked in their fields which have been selected by you and your supervisor. So this goes to them and then they have to each read through your thesis and critique it, mark it, come up with lots of questions before you do your PhD defence. Now the time period between handing in the first copy of your thesis and doing the PhD defence can vary quite a lot. I think they told me about six weeks, but I think it normally ends up taking between three to four months. I think that's around about what it took for me. And that's like a really scary time period because you don't know at what point you're gonna get the email to say the examiners are finished. Like that time period varies substantially depending on what the examiners have got to do, how busy they are. And obviously this year for me, we're dealing with something we have no doubt with before. So obviously everyone's super busy and everything's super delayed. So it did take a while. My biggest piece of advice is prepare for your defense as soon as you've handed in your thesis. Honestly, like as soon as you've handed in your first copy, you have a big celebration. The last thing you want to do is start preparing for your defense presentation. But honestly, it could be in six weeks time. Like you don't know how long it's going to take and it does take a lot of preparation. So it's always better to just get it done and get it out of the way and then it's ready. So you're gonna be ready for whenever you get that email. A PhD defense, I mean, it's in the name. So you have to defend your PhD, you have to defend your work. The typical scenario is firstly, you have to give a public presentation. So this will just be um, a typical PowerPoint presentation that's open to the public and open to your colleagues. Also in the room, you will have your panel of examiners. So the examiners who have already reviewed your thesis, they will all be sitting there and you will also have a chairperson in the room and they are just there to moderate and to make sure all the questions and everything are fair. So after you've given your public talk and everybody claps and you give thanks, everybody leaves the room and you stay in the room, just you, the panel of examiners, the chairperson and your supervisor. That is where the actual oral defense part starts. So basically each one of them has in front of them a copy of your thesis, which they have already reviewed and critiqued and they've got little notes written on them with all the questions and stuff that they want to ask you about your work. They take turns and each one of them goes through all the other questions and sort of asks you anything that they want to know and brings up any queries that they have with your work. And it's, it's really scary and I mean, it wasn't as bad as I thought, like it was less of an interrogation and more of, more just queries and they showed, I guess, that they were really interested in my work. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. Basically, they just want to make sure that you are the most knowledgeable person on your very topic. And I mean, you are on your specific PhD title, you are the leading expert on that and they just want to make sure of that. They want to make sure that you are the person that carried out this work, that you know exactly what you did, why you did it, the wider implications of what you've done, all that sort of stuff. So they just want to make sure and even though my examiners were not mean or anything, I mean, they do really grill you because, you know, this determines whether you get doctored or not. So it's a very serious conversation, but they're not super mean about it. I have heard of examiners which can be quite mean and again, that is just going to vary depending on different personalities. Like, the scariest thing for me was that your supervisor has to be in the room with you the whole time and basically they have to sit there and they're not allowed to talk so they basically just like sit there behind you and just sort of listen to the examiners ask you the questions and listen to you terrified like terrifyingly like answer all these questions and I mean your supervisor you've worked with them for your entire PhD and you know 
I mean, at least for me, like they are the person that you want to impress the most or they're the person that you want to disappoint the least. So having them sat there whilst you're being like grilled is kind of terrifying. Um, luckily because mine went okay like it was fine but i imagine like if it went wrong or like you started to panic like in your head you're just going to be thinking like oh my god my supervisor's there and they know i'm panicking and oh my god they're so disappointed in me and ah, all this stuff like i imagine it could be really bad but mine went fine so i was okay um after each of them has asked all the questions that they want to ask and they are satisfied with all of your answers they will ask you to leave the room and that is where they discuss among themselves whether or not you have gotten the phd or not so you go and sit outside and again you don't know how long you're going to be out there i think i was outside for like at like 15 minutes I think and then what happened one of them opened the door like they didn't say anything and I just walked back in and the first thing that was said to me was uh congratulations Dr. Jay Maniti and I'm like ah! and then that that was it like that was me passing and that was me getting officially my PhD so yeah each one of them congratulates you and then you have your thesis edits to do so each one of them has all their comments and things that they want you to edit on your thesis and depending on on how extensive these edits are. Your thesis can either just go back to your supervisor and they can just check off that you've done each of the comments to a satisfactory level and then you get to hand it in officially or if there are substantial changes then it will have to go back to your examiners to be re-examined. I was lucky that mine just had to go to my supervisor so they were just minor edits so I was really happy with that. Obviously because of corona the way I had to defend was slightly different. Initially when I was first told about my defense I was told that it had to be entirely on zoom and I'm not gonna lie like when I first had that I was actually quite happy because I thought like okay well, the scariest part about giving a talk is like the crowd and you know if you mess up like you're gonna mess up in front of a whole bunch of people so at first when I heard that it would be on zoom and that the only people that would be in the room would be my examiners and my supervisor if they chose to be but then when I thought about it I thought you know four years is a long time and I'm really proud of my work and it would be really nice if my friends and my colleagues would get to be in the room and watch me do my defense and be in there with me so after speaking to admin I was allowed to have some people in the room as long as they all sat with one space in between them and I mean everybody wears masks in Hong Kong anyway so that was absolutely fine. What happened was they had a camera set up on a table next to me and I had to kind of direct the talk both to sort of the room and to the camera so there was an option for people to watch on zoom if they didn't feel comfortable coming into the room or if they couldn't or didn't want to come into the room for whatever reason um, that option was there. So although it was like a bit scary having sort of a camera like right here like whilst I was doing the talk. It was quite nice because one of the pluses of that was that I also got to have my family watch on Zoom. My family are mostly back in the UK so it was really nice that a bunch of them got to watch because you know otherwise they wouldn't have been able to come out and watch it so that was one of the benefits of having it on Zoom. Getting to see their names like coming up on the Zoom was like was really nice actually quite comforting so that that was a really nice part of it. There was a bunch of technical difficulties at the start with sounds and of course they happened with my mother like my mum's on the zoom and she's texting me like Jay I can't hear you so I'm like trying to sort it out with the tech person like frantically before the talk so that's one thing I do recommend like if you do have to do it on zoom um, make sure you get there like well in advance I mean I was there like an hour and a half beforehand you know but things can go wrong so it's always better to like plan ahead for this stuff and you know despite doing a dress rehearsal and everything like there were still some issues when I first got there in the room so it is always worth just going in early just in case you know and it was also nice that afterwards sort of when everybody clapped and then my family like turned on their microphones and I could hear them saying you know congratulations um so it was really nice sort of hearing their voices and stuff like so it was there was some really nice benefits of being able to do it on zoom as well I was also really lucky that at the time of my defense things in Hong Kong were actually pretty good with regards to the coronavirus so all the bars and everything were still open as as normal I said pretty much so I got to go and celebrate afterwards with all my friends which is really really nice and very shortly after that things did get worse and a lot of the bars and the restaurants and everything did close down so I was like really 
really really lucky with the timing. If you have to do your defense entirely on Zoom and then you don't get to go out and celebrate afterwards, you know, it's very unusual, it's very weird and it may feel like a bit of an anti-climax, like after building yourself up and you've waited for months and months to do your defense and it finally comes and I can completely understand that it would feel quite sad for some people that do have to do their defenses entirely on Zoom and those that won't get to go out and celebrate afterwards but I mean it is what it is like we're all doing our best and we all just have to get on and you know you can do sort of Zoom parties with your friends and you got friends in other countries they'll be able to get to watch and we'll just have to save all the celebrating and everything that we're missing out on for a later date when hopefully things die down and you know the other good thing about having it on Zoom is that you get to have a recording recording of like the most terrifying day of your career um <laughs> so yeah i do have my defense recorded and i did think about making a youtube video just showing my whole defense but i'm not sure like uh it makes me get really cringy whenever i think about watching i haven't even watched it through yet so i don't know maybe i'll do that um, but yeah, so that's essentially the whole defense process. After you've done that and you've got given all of your edits to do, you're given a particular time period. I was given three months to do my edits. I got them done within one month because I just wanted to get it done and just <laughs> out of the way. And then you hand in your final bound copy. So that's basically it, the PhD slash PhD defense process. I hope that was maybe interesting or at least insightful for anyone that didn't know what a PhD defense was. If you do have any questions, please do comment below. I am going to be trying to do different sorts of videos, sort of like PhD advice, advice for careers in STEM or maybe advice for undergraduates that are thinking about furthering their education or potential careers in science or conservation. And so if any of that does sound interesting to you, please do subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for watching. Bye!